Okay, so with my thumbnail panel um, showing, what I wanna do is I wanna hit this plus sign over here in the bottom right, and I wanna go and turn on the timeline. When you have the timeline on, you can scrub through your entire storyboard sequence to kind of see what the timing looks like. You can also go to each one of your thumbnails and you can drag them outwards to extend the timing. You can also drag them back inwards to decrease the amount of timing. It's a pretty fun thing to do. One thing to note is that in the panel um, box, you can actually see the number of seconds, number of minutes, number of hours, and the number of frames of animation for each of these. Um, so as you drag them and make them longer, you're gonna have a 29 second panel. And as you drag this inwards, you can have a zero second, 10 frame panel. All right, so here's how you record using the actual app if you don't wanna bring in your own audio from like your cell phone or something. So file menu, import, and then you can record sound. Okay, so I'm gonna hit the record button and I'm gonna read my script. Knock, knock. Who's there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting cow who? Moo. All right, so now there's that audio clip. If I wanna hit the play button to see if it actually worked, I can check. Knock, knock. Okay, so it works Who's perfectly. There? All right, I'm gonna click OK. Essentially what you wanna do is you wanna slice up your audio, get rid of any blank spots, and then reorganize it in a way that makes sense. Good idea also, um, if you don't see any waveforms, make sure you right click and you show the waveform. Because as is, you're not gonna really see anything but it's nice to have that visual cue so you know exactly where to trim this audio down. To, to get rid of audio you don't want is to right click and you split, and then you go here and you delete. That's one of the ways to do it. The other way to do it is to hover over the end of the actual audio clip, and then what you could do is you just drag this. So I'm gonna drag this over here to kind of stop. I can single click and drag this audio clip right there. So let's get a new audio track. So I've got two people, so this will be Priscilla's audio. So I'm gonna rename this. I wanna go and right click on this A1 audio patch and I wanna rename that as well. And I'm gonna call that Bob audio track or Bob audio. There we go. So now what I need to do is to separate them onto two different lines. Okay, so here's Priscilla, right? Knock, knock. So Priscilla's the one doing the knock, knock. So we're gonna drop that down. We're gonna drop this one down. We're gonna drop this one down right here. We know Priscilla is gonna giggle also at some point. And then Bob's gonna say, you've got problems. By the way, you can go and select all these, right click them and you could set a color, which works out really nicely because I know Bob is in blue and Priscilla's in purple. So just drag a box over all of them, select them. And if you want to, you could rename these as well, but I don't really see any value in doing that. So I just leave it as is. Okay, now that they're all color coded and they're separated, let's line them up. So it's a little bit more natural of a conversation. All right. So anyways, let's go back and play that one more time. Knock, knock, who's there? Interrupting cow, interrupting cow, who? <laughs> okay, so now what I wanna do is to have a little bit of fun. So maybe I wanna take these, I wanna take Bob's character, and one of the things I could do is to mess with the audio. So I'm gonna change the speed and the duration. It's currently at 100%. If I increase the speed, I can increase the percentage. So maybe I should take this up to 130%, okay? Let's go, and notice how it shortened the actual audio. Let's go and take Priscilla's audio, 
and I'm gonna keep it as is, but for this one, let's go and let's slow it down. So instead of the full 100%, let's do 75% and then click OK. Notice how this extends it outwards, okay? Let's go listen again, see what happens. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting cow who? <laughs> okay, maybe I'm gonna take this this character right here. And if you remember, we increased it to 130%. Let's go and take this one and let's change the audio gain again. By the way, if you want your if you want your voice to sound the way your voice sounds, just preserve the audio pitch and then click OK. You'll notice that it's gonna be your voice, but faster. Okay, so here we go. You got some problems. Okay. If you go back and you don't preserve the audio pitch, then you sound like a chipmunk. All right, so now that we got the entire joke set up and I have the timing just right, let's go and line up all of these pictures to this audio. In this time lapse, you can see that I'm moving the frames around and I'm just constantly dragging back and forth and what I'm trying to do is to get a sense of when and where the pauses are going to be and that'll allow me to change the actual picture that's going to show up. It's a good idea to pay attention to the natural breaks in the waveforms and then you can always go back and forth and kind of move things around. So if you need to get rid of a couple frames or panels of your storyboard you can and you have this ability to just go back and edit. Now I'm not doing it here but um, you can always unlock your layers and then you can go and adjust the the audio tracks as well. You may be doing this process and as you line it up with some kind of a picture, you may realize, you know what, I do need a little bit more time. The key with what you're trying to do is to fine tune everything and take your time. time. Knock knock. Who's there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting cow who? <laughs> You've got some problems. All right. So now that I've got this whole scene pretty much figured out, what I want to do is make a couple of adjustments to these actual um, storyboard drawings, and then I can go back in and kind of finalize and clean everything up, make sure everything looks appropriate. Now 11. So we go 9, 8, then we go to 10, then we go to 11, and then we go to 10A. So we got a little bit of trouble with the sequencing. And the reason is, is because I was moving some of these panels around. Um, so we've got to go back and fix that. So in order to do so, I want to go to 6, 7, 8. This one should be 9. So what I want to do is I want to type in 9 and press Enter. So now we're good. Now. One of the things I'd like to do is to show you what happens when you type in a number that's already existing. So what happens if I change that to nine also and try to press enter? What shows up is the scene name is invalid or has been used by an other scene. So if I want this to be as part of scene nine, as in the same background, I need to click and hold and then drag this so it goes Notice that green line, so it goes right onto there. Notice now that both of these are scene nine and they're linked together. Let me undo that, control Z. Now you could see that the scenes are separated where we've got nine and we've got 11 and we've got 10A. Okay, so just be aware you can do that. You can click and move things around where it will go in between, control Z. You can take this and you could set it up so it's a part of one of the existing scenes. And you could take it out of there and make it a part of another existing scene. So notice it goes from gray and then it's gonna go to black um, with that one drawing. And then of course you could just drag it here at the end and it could be completely by itself and alone. I'm gonna click okay. Or I could just get it to link up to the end. 
All right, so last thing I'll do with this segment is to just go back, make sure that everything is labeled appropriately because this will make a lot of sense and it's gonna save you a lot of time when we export this stuff and it goes to Harmony. Okay, real quick, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, 11. Okay, we're looking good. All right, so let's turn that little light bulb on. That's the light table. And what it's gonna do is help us do some rough boarding. So now that all of these thumbnails have served their purpose, and I figured out what I want the scene to look like, it's a good idea to go and do a super, super rough pass with the storyboard. Now, there are a million ways to do this. This is not the only way. Um, you know, you can draw on post-its, you could do your thumbnailing process directly into Storyboard Pro. Um, you know, you could use just simple shapes and things like that. But whatever the case is, I would encourage you to choose a process that you like, a process that's easy for you to use, and um, it's going to give you some accurate results. Some other techniques that will really save you a lot of time and to make your life a lot easier uh, will be to use the onion skin layer. Um, you might want to go and scrub back and forth between panels so you can see what the overall movement is. Notice in the layers menu, so off to the right of the drawing area, uh, at times I'm tracing over the actual thumbnail just to get the general location of my characters all set up. And then I just turn off that actual thumbnail and then I continue with the drawing and I put in detail as needed. Yeah, weird things happen. You know, they, they look okay inside your thumbnails, but then when you actually get down to business and start drawing, you know, in the storyboard, you might need to make some additional changes to the backgrounds and to the characters. Okay, so don't be afraid to modify and adjust because you do not, absolutely do not have to stick to exactly what that thumbnail shows. All right, so now I've gone back and I've reboarded everything. Notice it's super rough. Um, later I can go back and do my revisions and make sure that everything's on model, but it's a little bit closer to what I, what I want, okay? Let's go add some camera moves. So if you notice um, over here, I drew the background a little bit bigger with this nice wide establishing shot at the beginning. And what I'd like to do is to start by hitting the plus sign and I'm gonna start my camera right there. Now you can go and adjust the camera by using the camera tool. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this right over here so we have a nice establishing shot. And just to be able to see what I have, you can actually turn on the camera mask and then you can see like, oh, okay, this is what the scene is gonna look like. You can move it around and it's just a great way to go and show some stuff. Um, you know, that's still available in, in your scene and it will give you a very strong cinematic feel. All right, so there we go. Let's try to recenter on that. And what I would like to do is to just kind of scrub through, scrub through, scrub through. And at about here, let me go hit the plus sign again. And what I want to do is to have this camera in a different area and it's settled in on our characters. And our characters are going to be like slowly walking down the, uh, the beach, okay? So as I move through, you can see that it's going to go and show the establishing scene. And then there we go. I can go and modify or edit these by changing the, the start time. So if I want, I can have it, I could be right here at the beginning for a couple of frames. And then it's going to slowly start and then, then it'll start to move eventually. So if I hit that play button, stationary and there we go okay it was a little too fast so if I stretch this outwards and then if I move this back just a bit that might play a little bit better um, if I wanted to I could really extend out this scene but I'm trying to shoot for something that's about 10 to 12 seconds for the whole animation there we go knock knock who's there interrupting cow Okay, so that was good. Now, if the camera move is way too abrupt, one of, the, one of the techniques I could do is I can just click on these arrows to go to the specific keyframe. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna modify um, this actual, I'm gonna, I'm gonna modify this camera. Let's make it a little bit wider. Um, I think if we have less camera movement and we go a little bit wider on the actual scene, then I think it will look a little bit, a little bit calmer, a little bit, uh, I think it'll have a little bit better of a pace. Notice I don't wanna show my characters, so I'm just gonna scoot it right over here. And then when I hit the arrow to go to the next, um, when I go to hit the arrow to go to the next keyframe for the camera, I can go back and adjust. I wanna try to get these to be about the same size, um, maybe a little bit of a zoom in, so it'll be a little bit smaller than my start camera. And then I'm gonna just settle it right over there. I think that's probably good. Um, since I don't have that much time, I want to make the amount of movement very minimal, so that way it's not as jarring. Okay, let's go watch that again. Knock, knock. Okay, that works. Now, you can also, in the same way that you move a camera, you can go and you can, um, you can move a layer of artwork. So maybe what I'm going to do is, at this point, I'm gonna select on the A layer, which is where I have my artwork. By the way, I've turned off my thumbnails because I don't need it anymore. And what I could do is I can hit the plus sign and it'll leave a location um, of where this keyframe is. I can move to the end of the animation, which is about right there. Hit that plus sign again. And then now I have a start and a stop point for my actual animation. Let's hit that arrow to go back to the start. And instead of using the camera tool, I'm gonna to transform the layer. So I'm gonna use this layer transformation tool, which is right over here. So click on that. Turn off the camera, turn on this one. And then maybe I'm gonna have these characters right about there. They're gonna be in the background, whoops. So let's make them a little bit smaller. There we go. And then if I click on the arrow to go to the next frame of animation, um, let's move them a little bit closer towards the previous one. If you want, you can turn on the onion skin so you can see where your characters are gonna be as you scrub through the actual animation. So there it is. So we can kind of see some movement getting a little bit bigger as they come towards the camera. So there we go. That's how you do animation and that's how you do camera movement in Storyboard Pro. All right, so we've got one final review and then we are just about done with our animatic. Okay, so let's kind of talk about this. We, we brought in a bunch of thumbnail sketches. We took those thumbnail sketches that were done step by step, and we used the timeline to go and adjust them. We recorded audio, we chopped up the audio, we adjusted the audio by making the pitch lower and kind of stretching it out. Um, we did some camera movements, we did some animated layers, uh, specifically with these two characters that are walking. You can see that there's a little uh, running animation character in the layers menu right there. Got a lot going on. We uh, included panel information. We renamed some of the panels. My goodness, there's a lot. Now, the last two things I wanna talk about in this video are exporting to Harmony and exporting to some kind of an animatic and a storyboard. All of this hard work, by the way, we should hit the save button. All of this hard work needs to be used somewhere. So let's go and do a couple of things. Number one, I'm gonna file menu, export, and then I could take this straight to Harmony. And what this is gonna do is it will allow me to create a bunch of directories and it will make separate files or separate file folders with all of the stuff, all of the camera movements, all the animation. It does all of that for you. So for instance, if this one is titled scene one, scene two, scene three, it will make a short film in Harmony and we'll get all of your keyframes and things like that ready to go. So let me just, uh, yeah, I think user admin is fine. Let's call this knock knock. 
knock dash knock. And I think I want the original size. I think I'm gonna do, let's just do two, two or three of the scenes. So let me select, you know, number one, number two, number, th number one through three. Let's see if I can select all of them and then click OK. And I'm gonna export those. So there we go. Now that we've got that all set up, we're gonna have our knock knock one. So notice we've got this entire folder. We've got our X stage ready to go. So let's boot up Harmony. Got my knock knock two, there's a separate X stage. And then of course there's a knock knock three. There's one final X stage. And let's see what that first establishing shot looks like in Harmony. All right, so there we go. So it's worth noting that I have that establishing scene where there's a little bit of nothing, a little bit of camera movement, and then we have our characters and they're kind of walking. Okay, super, super handy. We all know like we can take this in harmony and kind of move it around and extend the animation so we can make other adjustments and things like that. Okay, let's just close this because I don't really want it. It's more about Storyboard Pro but it has, I have everything ready to go, which is super, super handy. Okay, the next thing that we could do is file, export as a PDF. So um, a pretty much industry standard is to go for the three panel horizontal, call it what you wanna call it. So I'm gonna call this uh, knock knock joke dashboard. And I think I'm going to do all the scenes. So let me go and hit the export button. Okay, okay. Let me close this. And um, here we go. So here's our knock knock joke all set up. Notice that we have expanded panels to be able to show that there's some kind of a camera move. Um, we have the rest of our board. If we have dialogue or notes or action notes, that's going to show up there. Notice that if we choose that uh, generic setup, we have the scene numbering, we have the overall duration of time, the number of panels. So all of that information is there for you. It's really, really handy. And all you have to do is just click a couple buttons. And then finally, the last thing we can do is to actually go and export this to some kind of a film. Okay, so let's go back to Storyboard Pro. Let's go File Menu, Export, and then we're gonna choose Movie. Now, depending on where your movie is, um, you can have a different format. Since I'm working on a Mac right now, I'm gonna just use an H.264 uh, with an MOV setup. Uh, if you're on a PC, maybe you wanna do like a WMV or whatever your computer's configured to. Okay, so I'm gonna go and um, keep that in the admin folder. Let's call this uh, knock knock. And I'm gonna call this an animatic because it's a film. Okay, I can go full size, uh, keep all that. Let's do all the scenes. Yeah, I think we're good. Just keep everything as is from default and then it will export for you. Notice that the bottom button is gonna be the one or the bottom area is gonna fill up. The top one is for when you export to a storyboard as a PDF. The bottom is for a movie file. Okay, so off screen, this just opened up. So let's watch one last time. So let's put this into a nice quick time file for me. 13 seconds, start to finish animation. Knock, knock. Who's there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting cow. Ooh. <laughs> You've got some problems. All right, so that's pretty much how you do it. So assuming that works and you share it with some friends and they give you some feedback, um, you would just go fix it and make it a little bit better. And then you could do one last revision to clean this up because, you know, this is really rough. I would go back and re-sketch these characters, put them on model, add in additional sound effects, do whatever I need to do to make it right. And then I would spend my time in Harmony and animate it. All right, guys, I hope that uh, that pretty extensive video was helpful. <laughs> uh, I'd love to see what you make. Definitely uh, post something up and let me know how it goes for you. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.